Thank you, Erica. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be here. Um, I couldn't have been set up better than to have, uh, have them announce an educational game before this. It's just about the best intro ever. Um, uh, so as Derek mentioned, I'm a product manager at Google uh, who spent the last few years working with a relatively small team um, trying to tackle some big education problems. And lately, we've been really, really excited uh, about the emergence of pervasive, accessible, and powerful uh, virtual reality. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about that, and then we're going to take it for a spin. Um, so uh, VR is really, really exciting to us uh, as people who think about education and technology because it allows us to scale an aspect of learning uh, that technology and sort of the educational establishment as a whole um, has really struggled to scale. And that's what I'll call here like experiential learning, like learning by doing, by seeing something uh, for yourself, by like actively constructing knowledge along with your peers. Uh, and like, look at all the good things happening in this classroom, right? Kids are actively engaged. There's, there's smoke. There's, uh, they're working independently. They're working together. Uh, this teacher is having fun. Everyone's having fun. Now, this is a great day in school. Uh, but days like this are actually uh, quite rare. Um, if, you, uh, if you go into schools and you see uh, what's happening, actually relatively little learning is happening by doing. Uh, and that's not to like. Um, uh, say schools are failing, uh, in lots of ways that's like a failure of all of us. It's a failure of all the system, it's a failure of the technology. Uh, but we've known about this for a long time. Like our great pedagogical thinkers like John Dewey have been saying this um, uh, over 100 years ago. Um, and so here, here's one way to think about it. Uh, if there's any doubt that like, technology has changed everything, um, here is uh, uh, St. Peter's Square in, uh, in the Vatican in 2005 uh, as Pope John Paul was being laid to rest. And here is that same square in 2013 uh, when Pope Francis was being announced. Does anybody like, notice a difference? <laughs> Something has changed? That's eight years. That's incredible. Um, but classrooms haven't really changed that much. Here's a classroom in 1964. And here's a classroom 50 years later. They look pretty similar, right? I can try to illustrate this point in a different way. Uh, how many of you remember like a, a test, a big test that you took in school? How many of you remember? Okay. How many of you remember all the information on that test right now? Like how many think you could do really well on that test if you took it again right now? <laughs> Not too many, I bet, right? How many of you remember a trip you've taken to like an interesting place, a country, a museum? About the same number. How many of you think you could actually like tell me important details about that trip or about uh, that experience? a lot more of you, right? So obviously I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but imagine if you learned the stuff that was on that test you forgot the same way you learned about that interesting place you went. You'd probably remember it better. So that's why I think virtual reality has so much potential for education and learning. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about Google Expeditions. It's one of our like, earliest attempts to, to really try to use this amazing technology to improve that at least a little bit. Um, and uh, Google Cardboard is what made Expeditions possible. Has anyone used cardboard here? OK, maybe like a quarter of you. Um, it actually started as a 20% project uh, in our Paris office at Google, uh, where some engineers from the Google Cultural Institute were trying to find a way to make viewing digital exhibits far more engaging. This was the prototype. Most people thought it was a joke internally. But anyone that they could get to actually use it to put their smartphone in this thing was struck by just how immersive it was. And the beauty of cardboard was that it was, it was completely unintimidating. It, was, it wasn't like this big thing that was connected to a computer, it was wires, it, it was just a piece of cardboard. So we took this, we did a little bit of that, and we ended up with this, uh, which is uh, what we still use today. Uh, you put a smartphone in that, uh, your smartphone becomes uh, basically a VR headset. And we also released a full set of specifications that allowed others to build cardboard viewers of their own. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of these things. They're made out of walnut, out of plastic, out of sheet metal, out of foam, out of all these different things. And so basically what Google Cardboard lets you do um, is it puts you in the middle of a sphere. Uh, and it uses the sensors on your phone uh, to basically uh, track your, as your head moves. Uh, you can then uh, look at 360 pictures, 3D films, uh, you can play games, you can do all these things. So just to illustrate what we were able to do with like, expeditions, for instance, it started with this really, really simple idea. Field trips are amazing. They're a really effective, fun learning experience. 
but they're really rare. They're expensive, they're complicated, and they're constrained by all these like physical realities like safety and time of transit and all these things. But when we saw how people were responding to Google Cardboard, um, we knew that there was something we could do there to uh, help it tap into the same sort of energy um, for learning. So Google Expeditions started about two years ago. Um, uh, when we decided we wanted to give uh, teachers this sort of superpower uh, that would let, their, let them transport their kids to anywhere. Uh, and to give you an example, uh, we, we sort of built a quick little prototype and we took it to a school uh, in, in New York City, Bronx Latin. Uh, and we uh, talked to this amazing teacher uh, who had been teaching this lesson for 25 years about Machu Picchu. And it was, it's a great lesson. It's like the kids imagine that they're archaeologists who've just come upon Machu Picchu, and they're supposed to try to like, derive insights about what it was used for just based on how it looks. And this, this photocopied picture, this is the, the, the image of Machu Picchu that these kids were given. This is an amazing lesson. This is an incredibly enthusiastic teacher. And this is an incredibly uninspiring bit of media. Um, but Google Expeditions was able to just, we were able to take this 360 imagery of Machu Picchu and seamlessly, like that part of the lesson still worked. Like we're not, we're not radicalizing pedagogy here. Uh, we're not trying to like change everything. Uh, we're not trying to intimidate this teacher by making her feel like she's doing something wrong. No, we just gave her this tool that let her uh, use it to engage her students instead of this photocopied picture. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you just a quick, it's kind of hard to get a sense um, uh, for how it works, so I'm gonna show you a video uh, of it being used in a class. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to a guy named Lance Teasling, who's one of our favorite kids who used Expeditions, and then we'll take it for a spin. Can I get the video? My name is Lance Teasling. I'm in middle school in Eagle Grove, Iowa. Eagle Grove is not a very tall place. It's actually very flat. This is the tallest building on Main Street. It is about 50 feet tall. When I grew up, I want to be an architect and design skyscrapers. Yesterday at school, we went on a class trip, but this was not a normal trip with buses. This was something very different. The very first expedition we went on was to the Burj Khalifa. Go ahead and grab two hands and put them up to your face. It's so tall. Uh, okay, so now, uh, now let's try it. So uh, what, basically what I'm gonna do is, uh, the way expeditions work is the, the guide um, has a, a tablet, which I'm gonna have here, and we're gonna show you what the guide is doing, and then I'm gonna ask a few people to come up uh, and basically uh, be our students. Uh, but everyone will get a chance uh, to use this um, right after at the uh, networking reception. We'll have some demo stations, so uh, we can't do one that's quite this large, um, but everyone should have a chance at that point. Uh, so can I uh, get a couple volunteers? Uh, let's see, we need, uh, how many are we doing? We're doing, I need three. Three people want to come up and take a trip to somewhere, anywhere. I see one over here, yes. Two, three, all right, we have three. Uh, oh, and we have, we have two more too, right? One more, sorry, got my numbers wrong. All right, welcome to class. <laughs> hey everyone, okay, cool, all right. Um, uh, so can I get the tablet on the screen? Great, okay. So hi guys, um, uh, what, what are your names? Brittany. Brittany? Brian. You're Brian? Shia. Shia, all right, thanks guys. Okay, we are going to um, uh, go on an expedition today. I thought we would, um, uh, look at an exhibition we made in partnership with Ken Burns that accompanied his most recent film about Jackie Robinson. But as you can see, uh, when you're in the app, there, we have all these virtual tours here, uh, things that we've made in partnership with a whole series of other partners. We've used Street View imagery that Google's taken. We have things to uh, uh, career expeditions where you learn about what it's like to be a metal artisan. We have a trip to the San Diego Zoo. We have all, all sorts here. Um, but let's look at this one. Uh, that we made with Jackie Robinson. Okay, so here I am as the teacher, I'm opening this, and these expeditions are made up of a series of scenes. So you guys can now look in your, in your viewers here, um, and I'm gonna take you uh, to present day uh, Brooklyn, 
Um, and this is actually the home of the, uh, this is where the uh, former Ebbets Field used to be. And we actually took this to a school in Brooklyn um, uh, that's right here in this housing development. And we brought them here. And then uh, I'm giving a little air. Oh. And we have this uh, uh, overlay of what Ebbets Field looks like uh, on this housing development there before. So uh, these little smiley faces, these are what these guys are looking at. Uh, and I'm able to, to point to these things. Uh, and if I want them to look at something, I can just make a pointer. Uh, and they get a little arrow in their screen that does that. Just to give this some context, uh, many of these kids who, uh, these are like uh, kids, uh, many of them are black kids from a, a disadvantaged community in Brooklyn. Like they didn't even realize who Jackie Robinson was. Like the name of the school is Jackie Robinson. We had to like put a stadium over it. Um, Okay, uh, so this is a, an expedition that's sort of the life uh, of Jackie Robinson, but we start in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and here in the Hall of Fame, which is a place, again, in New York City, most, these kids had never been to Cooperstown, that's hours away, um, but we were able to, to show kids what it's like to be in here, and then to show them like the plaque, um, Jackie's plaque. So when they look at that, they get this overlay, these guys can see it. Um, and you'll see in this application, uh, we have a set of scenes, and I have this panel here where we've put a lot of information. So you don't have to be an expert in Jackie Robinson. You don't have to know everything about him. Uh, a teacher can just pick this up and use this. Uh, and in it, we have a whole series of uh, preset sites that I can make, many of which have overlays, um, that talk about different uh, parts of Jackie's life. Okay, so let's, um, uh, we don't have too much time here, so let's, uh, let's go look at what Jackie's life was like. Uh, when he was in a minor league stadium. Uh, so this was the first uh, stadium that Jackie played in. This was in Montreal. Now this is where he played his minor league ball. Uh, and again, I can overlay these sorts of things. Uh, the students are free to look around. Their view is not slave to mine. Um, but if I want to point something out, for instance, like if we want to have a discussion about what we think the sort of crowd that was at uh, a minor league game in Montreal would have been and how that might have been different than uh, a crowd uh, that was in you know, the Deep South. Uh, the, Jackie was very intentionally um, sent to the minor league in Canada because there was much less racism there within the population. Uh, and so it's like, this is just an opportunity, a, a way to spur that type of conversation to take them back in time and to view that sort of thing. Uh, let's go um, look at uh, something that's really underappreciated about Jackie Robinson's life which was his, his time as, a, as a, a fighter for civil rights. This is actually like what Jackie spent a lot of, much more time in his life doing than playing baseball. Uh, and so here's a, a present day uh, image, a uh, piece of VR imagery of the Washington, uh, of the Washington Monument uh, and the Lincoln Memorial behind. This is where the uh, uh, Martin Luther King's uh, amazing speech happened. Uh, and we're actually able to um, overlay a historical image directly on top of the current piece of VR imagery, a historical image. So you can actually get a sense for like this place that you could actually go, this place that people are standing, uh, what it looked like over time. This is a much, much more powerful way to contextualize this type of uh, uh, historical document. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's see. We're about to run out of time. I think, I think maybe we'll conclude the demo there. Um, so I'm gonna stop here for a second. Uh, and thank you very much for participating, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna start with a couple of little concluding thoughts here. Um, so we've been at this for uh, just over two years, um, but we've already managed to take over a million students across 11 countries uh, uh, on expeditions. Uh, and actually one of the things that I failed to mention before that we've done that's, that's really important uh, is we want this technology to work without any, uh, without, like, basically with the fewest technological prerequisites it possibly can. So the tablet device that I was using there and the devices that the student were using, they were all communicating locally. So there's no Wi-Fi required. There's no internet connectivity required. What, what I was doing was using this tablet as a little local server that was directly sending the imagery to those, uh, to those devices. So we could take it to a school in Ghana, we can take it to the rural Amazon, we can take it to India, we can take it to schools that have no technological infrastructure at all, and it just works, and that's been really important. So you'll notice a lot of the, uh, the pins uh, on this map are places that uh, you would not reasonably expect uh, schools to have computers and the internet, anything like that. 
Um, and just to talk about VR a little bit more, uh, last week was actually a really, really big week for VR. Uh, there was an amazing uh, set of announcements that Oculus uh, made. The Sony PlayStation VR launched. Uh, we announced at Google uh, our new Daydream View, uh, which is uh, a, a much more powerful platform for mobile VR. Uh, and all this stuff uh, is just going to get better, faster, smaller, cheaper. Uh, it's really, really early days. I think we're probably like uh, maybe the, that big black phone, that like second one over from the left. Uh, that's about where we are right now. Right? It's only going to get quicker and quicker. Um, and so we always think that like evolution is this like linear path or like all in pursuit of like better learning and whatnot, and that's totally not how it works. VR's had a whole series of fits and starts. Uh, expeditions was something we really struggled with. This is what evolution actually looks like. Right? It's, not a, it's not a line. Uh, it's full of attempts, failures, great ideas that didn't quite work, lots of accidental successes, and that's why gatherings like this are so important, and that's why I'm so happy to be here. Um, so even if you aren't sure that this will work or that that's the, the, the best thing to do, it's always important to try uh, and to try together uh, and to see where we end up. Uh, and with that, uh, I will conclude and we can uh, continue the conference.